I'm like Mrs. Doubtfire, really, for the kids. Okay, so my first question is, you do a lot of great work for kids, so what is it about Mrs. Kasha Davis that is perfect for children all around the world? Oh my gosh, I'm like everybody's <laughs> auntie, and I love the kids, and I've always wanted to have kids, and I was fortunate enough that when I met Mr. Davis, he already had two kids from his previous marriage, so it was a perfect family. There we were, and I have fabulous nieces and nephews, and it just fills my heart to see these little kids' eyes bright up. I'm like Mrs. Doubtfire, really, for the kids, you know? So it's, it's, it's fabulous. And when they come to our story hour, it's as if they think Mrs. Kasha Davis lives here at the theater. She wears sparkly dresses and she loves to read books. Tell me a bit about Drag Queen Story Hour. Yes, well, Mary Tavali Hoffman and I created this drag story hour at Blackfriars Theater in Rochester, New York. She said to me, Kasha, there's, they're doing this fabulous story hour in San Francisco, you've got to start to do it. I know you love kids. So there it was. We've been running it for six <laughs> years now. And from it, we've created a children's television show called Imagination Station. And we're waiting to find that home. So I'm a backer of Imagination Station, but for anyone who's not familiar with it, tell us a little bit about the show and when it's going to, well, we know it's going to be homed eventually and how fabulous it's going to be. Yes, we're trying to find the right streaming platform, but the bottom line, it's going to happen. What's fabulous about Imagination Station is it's like as if, picture it this way, Mrs. Doubtfire hosting Pee Wee's Playhouse in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. And then you get an idea. And Mr. Davis is there. We've been together for 20 years. It's our neighborhood. And a predicament might happen. And then lo and behold, we ask our friends, we ask our family, and we have an emergency librarian on call. And therefore, we find a book that helps solve the question, so helps solve the problem. And it's really just a magic. And it's fantastic. And I couldn't be happier to be the one that is going to make this happen. I keep putting it out that it's going to happen. We've got meetings, and we're in processes, but it's going to happen soon. We've got four full episodes filmed, uh, essentially a first season, and we're ready to build from there. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about All Stars. You're making your return to RuPaul's Drag yes. Race after so long, after all the tweets from all of your fans. <laughs> How has it been to step back onto the RuPaul's Drag Race platform? It's been incredible. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for saying we want to see her back on TV. See, you might remember, remember me from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 7 opening credits, but now I'm on All Stars 8, and it's incredible. Really, this platform is such a wonderful way to continue to spread kindness and love, and that's really what it's all about for me. And if you're comfortable with me asking, if not, I can take this out. You're very open about your sobriety on Drag Race, and as a sober person myself, I really admire that. Why was that important for you to bring into the workroom? Well, you know my phrase is there's always time for a cocktail. <laughs> and right after season seven, it really hit me how much I was abusing alcohol, and it was time for me to take a look in the mirror. And I then got some outside help and joined a recovery program. And one day at a time, this summer, I hopefully will have eight years of sobriety. And I say this loud and proud because, listen, when I was drinking, everybody knew I was an alcoholic. <laughs> and I thought, well, nobody knows, but they certainly did. And now I am somebody who wants to talk about it because I think in the LGBTQ plus community, a lot of times people turn to drugs and alcohol to cope with family issues or just self-esteem, whatever the case may be. We want to find a community. We want to fit in. And I think, well, I'm going to share that so that maybe somebody will watch and say, oh, I can do that too. So you do so many amazing things. You do television, you do live performance, you write books, you share about your family life. What is your advice for aspiring creatives in the world of drag? Oh my gosh, first and foremost, never give up. You've got to understand that it's a building process and each little experience and each little relationship will build upon itself and fuel the next adventure. The big thing that I, everybody, it sounds canned, but it is important to just be yourself. And what do I mean by that? Well, it starts by looking in the mirror and saying, I love you every day, because when you love yourself, everything is possible. And then my final question is, what are you geeking out about right now that you're not working on? 
<laughs> Something I should be working on? Oh my gosh. Well, honestly, I should be working on uh, getting back to jogging. Because what was happening was the pandemic happened and I discovered my love for Oreos. And Mr. Davis and I were like, well, the world is going to end, but we're going to have Oreos. So, uh, I've packed on a little bit of weight, but that's okay. I love all of me, and this is a, a, sometimes the way it goes. But I do work out, but what I really want to do is get back to that cardio, because it really just makes me feel good. And it's where I do a lot of creating. I'll be out jogging, and I start to think about what's next, and I love that.